Welcome everybody. Today we'll be making butternut squash mac and cheese in our Ninja Foodie Smart Lid. There are quite a few steps involved here, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to need to do is to split, peel, and seed this butternut squash. Let's go ahead and get started. This is quite the process, worth the effort. Let's go. Make sure you have a really, really, really good vegetable peeler. This is a um, Cutco here. Super good, super sharp. Also Cutco knife. I'm going to take the end off to make it just a little easier to split. And find a position where it won't roll around too much on you. Make sure your hands are on the top because if this thing rolls, you could uh, cut your hand. So we're just going to tap the knife in and work it down and it'll sort of split itself. Let's go ahead and come in from the other side now. Same deal. It does not have to be cut evenly. It just needs to be split. And that's the sound we're looking for. Just let it crack right open. There it is. I'm going to do this part over the sink. You're not going to see it, but I'm going to take the seeds out. You can save those seeds if you want. You can roast them, salt them. Uh, we're not going to use the seeds in today's recipe. So I'm going to just go ahead and get that done. And for that, just simple kitchen tablespoon. All right. Now, once you got all your seeds out, we're going to need to peel this butternut squash. And if you got a good peeler, uh, this isn't that terrible. It's not that great of a job, but it's not that terrible. So let's get it started. There's a couple ways you can do it. We, we're gonna cube this up when we're finished. Not gonna try to roast this whole, we don't, this is a different kind of recipe. So if you feel like you can wanna cut it in half to get it peeled, uh, that's one way. And this one is done, except for trimming that end up a little bit. And in a few minutes, we're gonna do the other one next, and then we'll, we're gonna cube this up and get it ready for the pressure cooker. First, we gotta clean this mess up. And that's it, both butternut squashes are peeled. I think I'll take just a little more of that white off of there. There we go. And next, we're gonna move on to cube them up, get them in the foodie, and pressure cook them. All right, let's go ahead and cube these up, get them ready for pressure cook. Approximately one inch cubes, but you don't have to measure. Vegetable broth. That's right. We're going to pressure cook this in vegetable broth. So we're gonna add a lot of flavor. So how much vegetable broth? Well, that really depends on the size of your butternut squash. So you definitely wanna get enough in there. I'm not gonna tell you exactly how much, uh, at least a cup. Uh, we wanna get enough in there to, to achieve the pressure cook. So about yay much. <laughs> that was approximately a cup for me. All right, once you got everything diced up, you got your vegetable broth in there, go ahead and drop your pot into the foodie if you haven't already done so. And let's power up, lid down, crank it over to seal up top, seal right there. Depending on your brand of foodie, I am using the smart lid. For me, I'm gonna have to slide my slider all the way over to the left for pressure. High is where I want it. I am pureeing this, guys. I want this very, very, very soft. So we're gonna go with a 15 minute pressure and uh, up to a 10 minute natural pressure, which just means we're not gonna do anything for 10 minutes. It's probably gonna take about eight to 10 minutes to preheat the water to become a boil for the pressure. So we'll see you back here in just a bit. All right, guys, time's about up. I'm gonna go ahead and release the pressure. Make sure you use something other than your hand 
because obviously that is some pretty hot stuff coming out of there. And I'm going to say this a couple more times. I'll say it once here and a few more times. Uh, we're going to drain the liquid, but we need to reserve that liquid. Okay, so when you drain it uh, in your strainer, have another bowl underneath to catch the liquid. We're going to reuse this vegetable broth that's now infused with all of that butternut squash goodness. And uh, that's what we're going to use to pressure cook our macaroni with to put even more flavor into this dish. I'll see you back after I get everything drained. We've got the butternut squash out of the pressure cooker. I reserved the liquid right there and put it back into the pot. To the pot, go ahead and add your elbow macaroni noodles. Add two cups of your macaroni noodles to the reserved vegetable broth. I'm going ahead and get this back under pressure again for four minutes. Four minutes. All right, while we've got our noodles under pressure, we've got a few things to do. And by the way, this is a no natural pressure release on this. This is a quick release after four minutes. So pay attention to the time, guys. In the meanwhile, let's go ahead and cut up a little onion. I'm gonna use a eighth of a white onion. You guys use as much or as little as you want. So I'm gonna use a piece of onion about this big. And we'll also be sauteing, uh, once these turn translucent on us, we're gonna be putting in a little bit of minced garlic and a few spices, which I'll show you when I get to it. Go ahead and transfer your butternut squash over to a bowl. And we'll need to see how we did on the pressure cook, if we're gonna to need to put this in the blender or if we can just mash it up. And I'm just gonna start with a good old fashioned wooden spoon just to test the doneness of it. Oh, that is pretty done. I'm just mushing right through it and that's what we want. So we just wanna mash this down. I do not think we're gonna to have to break the blender out on this one. So let's get as much of the chunks out as we can. And having a few chunks of butternut in here is not a bad thing for this particular dish. We just don't want a whole lot of it. Oh yeah, we're turning to, turn to a puree down here at the bottom, so yeah. So we'll spend a few minutes on this and we're just gonna set this off to the side. Set that off to the side. and finish up our noodles and then get our onion, garlic, and other spices into the foodie. Okay guys, as soon as you get that quick release done on these noodles, immediately get it into your strainer. Do not need to reserve that liquid anymore. And I need you to immediately stop the cooking. So let's get cold water rolling. We don't want to, we're not worried about anything else right now. We're just getting cold water on this to stop the cooking because we're done cooking the noodles. Go ahead and place your onions into the pot and add about a tablespoon of your favorite oil. Olive or canola would work best. I'm using canola. Let's go ahead and saute these down in the foodie until these are translucent and then we'll add a half of a teaspoon of minced garlic and saute that as well. Adjust your temperature to H3. Go ahead and start it, and then you can lift your lid back up. Uh, high three is a good temperature for sauteing onions on. Anything higher tends to burn them. We don't wanna burn them. We just wanna get them a uh, little soft, a little translucent. Let's go ahead and talk about the seasoning now. Uh, you can use any or all of the seasoning or pick and choose whatever you want. I am using an Italian medley and, yeah, that's right, a pumpkin pie spice. And let me tell you what's in this uh, Italian one so you'll understand what I'm doing here. This is garlic, basil, oregano, rosemary, parsley, marjoram, white pepper, sage, which is really an important one for this, uh, a little bit of cayenne, some mustard, cumin, coriander, and further down the list, the least amount is in, the, in this, of course. 
So the stuff that I really want is near the top. We got a little uh, dried red bell pepper, and uh, that's about it. And over in the pumpkin spice one, and you're about to, as soon as I tell you what's in here, you're gonna understand this flavor profile. Uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, and cloves. We'll be using a half of a teaspoon of this one and a half of a teaspoon of this one and a half of a teaspoon of this one. And we can go ahead and start getting those spices in here now. Start letting them work with the oils and things. So this is the Italian medley, half a teaspoon. And this will be the pumpkin spice pie. I know that just sounds weird, but think about it. I'm doing butternut squash here. Pumpkin pie has very similar spices uh, that I would normally cook in a butternut squash. And that is a half of a teaspoon of that. And I'm holding, whoo, to smell as soon as it got hit that hot oil. Those smells are amazing. And I'm holding back on that uh, garlic right now. Let's go ahead and get some of that oil into the center so we can, don't let our uh, spices burn on us. Very strong, very strong. That smells amazing. Don't let those spices burn, guys. Just kind of keep mixing it around. That's beautiful. Let's go ahead and get the garlic going. We're just about there. Now, obviously, any or all of this, you can adjust to your liking. If you really like that garlic, knock yourself out. If you don't like the pumpkin pie spice, uh, well, I would still put a little bit in there, but uh, can certainly go less than I'm doing. I don't forget, I got a lot of other ingredients to come back in here. So I know that looks like a lot, but this is how I want to do it. And we'll be deglazing this spice off the bottom here in just a second. All right, let's give that a couple seconds to do its thing. And in just a few minutes, we are going to go ahead and add the macaroni back in the butternut squash, and some cheddar cheese. That is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and put the macaroni in. Vegetable broth that we cooked in was still on the noodles and that just helped us deglaze the bottom. You can look down in there. Most of the spices are now off of the bottom. What a beautiful mixture that is. We're gonna now go in with the butternut and I wanna caution you on this one. Uh, we did cook a very large butternut squash, so we're going to go in a little at a time. Um, we don't want to go crazy with the butternut here, but we want to add that delicious flavor. So we may or may not use all that butternut. If we don't, uh, I have mashed butternut squash for another dish because I got plenty in here. So I'm already starting to look like I have enough. Let's get just a little more, and that's going to leave me a nice batch here. Don't want to leave no noodles in there. That's going to leave me a nice batch, which I will add brown sugar, all kinds of great stuff to that, and use it as a side dish. Uh, it wouldn't go as a side dish with this meal, but it will go great with a side dish with a protein, such as a, um, oh, I don't know, a pork loin, something like that. What do you think, guys? Obviously, you can put as much or as little of that butternut in, but this is a butternut squash mash, uh, butternut squash mac and cheese, so we do absolutely want to get that flavor in there. So I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go too light on it. That looks like the perfect mixture to me. What do you think? Perfect, per perfect ratio. I think so. We got one more. We got one more ingredient to go here. And again, I am not going to measure or even tell you how much to use. I am using a shredded sharp cheese. You can certainly use any other cheese that you see fit for this dish. And I'm just going to put a little at a time and just keep stirring it. I'm still on H3, sear saute. You can hear the uh, sizzle there. Keep it hot. I want to melt this cheese. I want to evaporate any liquids that might have been in there from the, uh, from the pressure cook of the noodles. And that thickened it up real nice right there. The cheese is melting away. I 
And at any point, you can uh, add more cheese, you can add more butternut squash if you haven't put it all in yet. And you can even add more seasoning at this stage of the game. And you can see uh, by the volume of the mac and cheese that you can't even see the seasoning anymore. So we may end up putting just a tad more of the uh, pumpkin spice in. We're gonna give it a taste test here in a second. You always wanna taste as you go so you don't accidentally add too much of something. You know, it's easy to add to it, but it's really hard to take it back out. <laughs> Almost impossible. Fresh from the Ninja Foodie Smart Lid, one butternut squash mac and cheese. Well, there you go, guys. Now the best part. Let's give that a taste. Best macaroni and cheese you've ever had. Anyway, thanks for watching. Man, that is really good. Those combination of flavors. Woo! Thanks for watching. Hit that like button for me. Leave me some comments. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you real soon on the next Ninja Foodie video.